G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we are going to have a look at some trades that we could see 12 months from now in the 2025 trade period. A few days ago on the channel, I released a video um, about every team's contract headaches for 2025, the players on their own list, that they'll need to make a priority into signing up into a contract if they want to keep these players because they are out of contract. So in this video, I'm going to have a crack at really dialing in on some of the players we could see find a new home in 2025. It's just a bit of fun. Obviously, you know, the speculating from the outside, I don't have any inside info, but I got a gut feel on one or two things. And we can at least speculate on players that are certainly one to watch. And you know what? Like how many players switch clubs this year in the trade period? Like 20 plus 25? So I'm gonna have a stab at naming a few for next year. Uh, bearing in mind, there will be heaps that we obviously don't know about at this time. Before I get into it, if you don't mind considering subscribing to this channel, it's been a wonderful period of growth and I really appreciate everyone who's jumped on board. That being said, still more than half the people who were watching my videos over the last month haven't actually hit subscribe. So if you're getting value from them and want to be subscribed to a footy channel that will be consistent all through up until the draft, of course, and then again, going forward in 2025, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, so where do we start with this video predicting players who might switch clubs? You obviously look mostly at the players that are out of contract at the end of next year. Obviously, there's a few that could still move who are not contracted. So we'll go through some pre-agents as well. But where I'll start this video is probably look at some players who tried to leave their clubs this year, but were held to their contract. So first of all, Clayton Oliver might be the biggest elephant in the room when it comes to this. He reportedly was very keen on a move to Geelong. Ultimately, that didn't happen because, you know, Melbourne sort of pulled out of that. But I think, you know, we've had two years in a row of Melbourne reportedly being maybe interested in him leaving, only for them to pour cold water over it after the fact. So there was apparently a degree of interest from Geelong. Clayton reportedly wanted to get there. So could that be on the agenda again next year? I think it could be. But it might not be Geelong. It kind of depends because I think they will be up to their knees in going for another free agent who we'll talk about shortly. So if it's not Geelong, does Clayton Oliver get to someone like an Essendon or St Kilda, another team that's looking for a point of difference in their midfield? The longer Clayton goes without playing at his best form, regardless of his heavily contracted status, the cheaper he will be for the new club. So we'll see what happens, but I'm going to guess that Clayton Oliver finds a new home. Most likely to the Cats, but again, I'm going to predict someone else goes to the Cats, so maybe they don't get Clayton. Maybe it's Essendon or St Kilda. Just a heads up, guys, this video is brought to you in a paid partnership with BetterHelp. Personally, I think the ability to talk to someone about what's going on inside your head may be the most underrated tool we have. Personally, for me, I think one of the biggest benefits I get from verbalizing what's going on inside my head is that sometimes like thoughts or concerns that you have deep inside your mind kind of exist as these nebulous subconscious feelings. But when you actually say them out loud, when you actually have to articulate them into a sentence, there's plenty of times where I've found that that thought or concern that I had probably didn't actually make a lot of sense or was perhaps really irrational. And I didn't realize that until I had to formulate a sentence. So that's why I wanted to introduce today's paid partner, BetterHelp, because they're a platform that matches people with credentialed therapists who are trained to listen. The good thing about therapy is that it's a safe space. You know, there's no real fear of judgment. You get guarded help from an expert, an actual mental health trained professional. And I think people these days are really catching on to this idea that you don't need to be diagnosed with something like depression or anxiety to necessarily get a benefit from therapy. So if you want to get started in this process, you can go to the link in the description of this video, or you can simply go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. From there, you fill out a questionnaire, which helps them assess your specific needs. So it's easy to start and it's easy once you've started the process as well, because if you find a therapist that you perhaps don't feel like is the right fit for you, you can switch to another one at no additional cost. So if you're someone who thinks you could benefit from therapy, Consider BetterHelp, like I said, link in the description, or you can simply go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy, and that will get you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. Thanks guys, let's get back to the video. A few other players tried to move clubs. There was Brody Kemp, uh, the Saints went for him, but was held to his contract at Carlton. Now I don't know if he really wanted to leave. And short of that information, I'm probably gonna assume that he probably stays, but there might be some other Carlton players that move on. Xavier O'Halloran at the Western Bulldogs. Apparently Xavier wanted to get there. Was this purely because he wanted some extra years on his contract and therefore security because if that's all it was then obviously GWS can extend his contract and keep him at the club but I wouldn't be surprised if the Bulldogs come knocking again they're going through a little bit of a midfield transition some older players some of their best midfielders are over 30 so I wouldn't be surprised if Xavier O'Halloran does potentially get to the Bulldogs next year Wade Dirksen requested a trade but was held to his contract look he hasn't played a game so he may not get what he wants next year either Devin
Duncan Robertson was the other player I can think of that was shopped around, explored a move, but ultimately couldn't find a suitor. Now, he'll be out of contract at the end of 25, and to be honest, I think he needs to improve to be on anyone's list in 2026. So we'll wait and see on that one. I wouldn't be surprised if he's not at Brisbane at the end of next year, but it is also conceivable he just gets delisted. So let's talk about some big name free agents. I've isolated some ones that I think could be on the move, and I'm gonna say that I reckon I reckon Tom De Koning might head to the Cats. Now, this is just a hunch. He'll be a free agent. A Carlton fans are absolutely going to hate this, but I think it just makes so much sense for Geelong to go hard at him, and Geelong have a pretty good strike rate of getting the players that they want. He was one of the form players of the competition in 2024, a very damaging ruckman who can swing forward. Geelong have needs for that in general. They could use another new number one ruck. This is probably going to be Reece Stanley's last year. What does that mean for Toby Conway? Does that then push a trade down the track and... Does Toby Conway look for another club that are looking for a ruck? I think he's a good young player, but if the Cats go for Tom DeConing, I could see them being successful. He's obviously got their brother there. Now, it is also possible that Sam DeConing goes the other way to Carlton, but given that Tom's a free agent, this would be much easier, and I'm going to predict he gets to the Cats. Ed Richards is another low-key but also really good player to become a free agent this time next year. And I don't know if I'm going to predict him to leave, but I think this one is worth a watch. Now, I've got nothing to suggest he won't be loyal to the Bulldogs, but he is a gun and he might be one of the better. There's, there's a lot of high quality free agents, but if some of them sign contracts at the start of the year and he hasn't, he would be one of the best available. I'm talking about LDU and Brayshaw, who we'll talk about as well, but could Hawthorne have a crack at Ed Richards? I don't see why not, because they did go for Harry Perryman. Um, who is not a dissimilar play in style, like in position on the ground, half back to wing and a bit of midfield. GWS also lost a lot of players, Isaac Cumming and Perriman, like I said, and they have a clear need. Now, if I was Hawthorne and I was having a crack at Ed Richards, I'd be kind of confident of success purely because Hawthorne seem to be in this bubble right now where they're finding it easy to get players that they want. They did miss out on Perriman, to be fair. So I would like to see Ed Richards stay loyal, but I reckon that's one to watch next year. Sam Draper is another one that could find a new home. We do see a lot of big men move clubs at the end of the year. Now, where does he go? He'll become a, a restricted free agent depending on his contract. I'm not sure where that sits, but he will be out of contract and at least a free agent, whether it's restricted or unrestricted is the part I'm not sure about. South Australian, does he get back there? Um, would Port Adelaide have a need? Obviously, the, the ruck situation isn't 100% locked in and he is a ruck forward. The Saints apparently had a big crack at him a few years ago and that was before he played a game. Could they renew their interest considering they were looking for someone to either support or partner up with Roland Marshall this year? Could Collingwood would use him. Maybe less so the pies make sense, but I I wouldn't be surprised if Sam Draper looks around. That being said, Todd Goldstein is likely to retire at the end of the year, so do they prioritize him and give him a big contract? We'll see. Another one to watch is Kane Farrell. I have no idea whether he's likely to leave. He's an established best 22 defender at Port Adelaide, and he's been a good player for a while now, I think, and a very lethal kick. And being Victorian, I wouldn't be surprised if, again, clubs come calling for him. So I don't know where I'd predict he would go, but I wouldn't be surprised if Kane Farrell is one of the free agents to move next year. Now, those are the free agents. Let's talk about the trades. I think I'm going to lose some of you when I say this, but allow me my West Coast nuffy moment. I predict Chad Warner gets to the West Coast Eagles this time next year. There seems to be a fair bit of noise. So unlike everyone else I've just talked about there, other than the players who nearly left this year, year. Chad Warner has had a multitude of reports suggesting he's keen to get back to Western Australia. I think it's just a keenness to get back in Perth. Sydney don't lose too many players and it would be a head scratcher if he left to join the West Coast Eagles. But John Ralph reported that he was considering going to Perth if Sydney had won the grand final this year. So we know that the Eagles have been loading up first rounders next year. They've got two. They've got their own. And Hawthorne, I think this is part of a bigger play to get Chad Warner. Fremantle will have less to offer and surely don't have the same need for Chad Warner that West Coast do. I mean, Fremantle's midfield is damn strong already and they must be tight on salary cap. So come at me if you like, but I think that is the prediction I'm going to make. That being said, to add some balance, I wouldn't be surprised if West Coast pays through the absolute nose for this and it's ultimately concluded that they've ruined their future and paid too much for Chad Warner and it will be concluded that it's a negative thing to do. That is my prediction, but I do think he gets to West Coast. Lee Kalir is another one who could move clubs. He has stayed loyal to the Giants. Uh, Sam Edmund was talking about, I think it was earlier this year, the phone has rung off the hook for Lee Kalir, talented key back. That was a first round draft pick not too long ago. I think it was 2021. He's 23 years of age, South Australian local. Like I said, he did stay loyal to the Giants, but again, he played eight of his 12 career games this year. If he doesn't improve on that, I could see clubs coming again 
for him and him finding a new home potentially in South Australia. But I can imagine in a lot of clubs looking for a good key back. Malcolm Roses Jr. is another one to watch, I think. So it was interesting how this was reported. Apparently he had a, like an end of season exit interview with Damien Hardwick. Hardwick said, you can go explore your options. Roses did that. And then when he came back to the club, they basically said, nah, we're not going to trade you. Riley Beveridge was quoted um, earlier this year talking about how the Brisbane Lions might be in the hunt for Malcolm Roses Jr. So he could go there. He's a Northern Territory boy originally, so he could stay. It's not local, is it? But Queensland is about as local as it gets for them. Um, otherwise, you know, could another team in Victoria who needs a small forward or even Fremantle could use a small forward, North Melbourne, Essendon, these clubs. I could see them absolutely asking the question of Roses Jr. Miles Bergman, will he another big name that I think some will target? A very good defender slash wingman from Port Adelaide that is originally Victorian as well. I would not be surprised if he gets targeted. And this is where it could be potentially an interesting merry-go-round if, if Port Adelaide targets someone like a Wanganeen Miller from St Kilda. So if he's South Australian, apparently has strong family links. If he has any desire to get back to South Australia, this could be one where Wanganeen Miller gets to Port Adelaide and Port Adelaide then feel like they could potentially move on Miles Bergman. I'm sure they won't want to, but it might be like the Dan Houston situation where if a player wants to leave, he can. On Bergman specifically, apparently Collingwood came with a big offer in 2023 to try and prize him loose for four years worth $3 million. He stayed loyal to Port Adelaide, but I think he only signed a two-year extension. And if you sign a two-year extension, I think that implies you're a little bit unsure. So we'll see. I, I would probably rather see Port Adelaide keep their player. And I think he's a really good one. But, you know, could St Kilda go for him? Could this be a bit of a trade? I don't know. Uh, you never see player for player swaps anyway. But both of these players are good and similar position, to be honest. And I could also see Hawthorne, again, having missed out on Perryman, having a crack at Bergman. There's Broden Campbell as well from the Sydney Swans. Now, again, not a massive risk to leave, I wouldn't have thought. But a player that was in the top five of his draft and played just the 15 games this year and a few sub-affected ones as well. So we've seen Luke Parker move on. And like I said, if I expect Chad Warner to leave, does this open up more opportunities? It also might affect someone like an Angus Sheldrick. So if Chad Warner stays, could some of these other talented young Sydney midfielders look for new homes? I think that's worth asking the question. Let's go through some players I expect to stay now. Andrew Brayshaw is one of the more talented free agents this year. I expect him to sign a lengthy deal at Fremantle. My personal opinion, he's the loyal sort. Um, and Hamish Brayshaw publicly said he fully expects him to stay at Fremantle. LDU as well. I suppose this one is a little bit contingent on how this year goes. If North are terrible, maybe it just opens the door, but I expect him to stay. I mean, Cam Zerha signed another deal. I think it was a five-year deal or something to stay at North, which showed some loyalty and belief in the system, and I imagine LDU follows suit. Finn Callahan is one I'm unsure about. Now, he's been heavily courted by St. Kilda. I think he's from that area geographically. Seems to be really happy in Sydney, but I could see him being out of contract this year. He will get some big money offers, in my opinion, and the Saints would probably love a player as with many clubs, like Finn Callahan on their list. Now, the Giants will probably make him a priority. So if it's a money thing, maybe the Giants can make this work. But I think that's a wait and see. I'm not going to lock him in this thing, but I think he's a chance. It's definitely a wait and see for me. A couple of Brisbane players, Cam Rayner and Stasevich, both become free agents. I don't think the Brisbane Lions lose too many players. They've got a great organization. It could just be a money thing. Cam Rayner's Victorian, Stasevich is from Western Australia. I know West Coast has had a crack at Stasevich, so we'll wait and see on that one, but I wouldn't be so bold as to predict Chad Warner and Stasevich to West Coast. The Bobby Hill story has been interesting. He was reported to you know, potentially want to go back to WA. Uh, it sounds like that was a bit of a storm in a teacup. I'm not sure if that's true, but he is out of contract, so until he's signed up, I think he will be the subject of speculation. I do predict he'll stay at Collingwood. And then there's Harley Reid where he will be one year out from being uncontracted. And I just think everyone's going to have a crack at him anyway. And I suppose if West Coast were convinced he was going to leave, you'd probably do it the year before he's out of contract. But my prediction is Harley Reid signs on for at least one more contract. We'll see after that. I don't think that is decided. I'm sure Harley probably hasn't even decided yet, to be honest. But it is also incumbent on West Coast to prove that they are on the right track and capable of playing finals, you know, before too long. There's a couple of talented young guns um, at certain clubs as well that I think will attract interest. They're not free agents, but Jesse Motlop, Judd McVie, and Kyle Lohman will be out of contract. Now, I can't see Kyle Lohman leaving the Brisbane Lions like he was just a, well, an awesome player in that grand final. It would take a lot for him to go back to Victoria. He stayed loyal 12 months previous when there was discussion around him not getting enough opportunity. Judd McVie is a gun. Uh, like I said, I don't know if the WA clubs, even though they would absolutely love to have a Judd McVie, I don't think Fremantle need him, and I think West Coast might have other targets. 
And that's assuming he would even be open to leaving. I think he seems fairly happy at Melbourne from what I can tell. And Jesse Motlop as well, the Western Australian small forward, just the seven games this year. I could see Fremantle having a real pop at that to supplement what they've got in their forward line. So that's another wait and see. I, I have no insight as to whether he's likely to leave. Um, he seems like a kid of good character, but if he wants to go back to WA, I could see Fremantle having a real crack at that. At the end of every year, we do see a cycle of underappreciated talents move clubs, particularly tall. So we'll just rattle off a few. Bailey Williams from West Coast, Laddams from Sydney, Jack Silvani becomes unrestricted free agent, Lewis Young also at Carlton there. You know, if Bailey Williams falls out of the West Coast team, I think he might look to move back to Victoria. Peter Laddams, I think Sydney's been shopping him around around. Silvani, the, the rumors there have always been there. And Lewis Young as well was told to look around this year by Carlton, but will be out of contract, I think, 12 months from now, if I'm not mistaken. Then I'll be intrigued to see what happens with these inside mids that probably can't crack the games that they would like. So first of all, Josh Ward, I suppose he did play 12 games or something this year, 15, I can't remember. That's not bad. And he was in their team in the finals. But I do think if he falls out of the team with Hawthorne going so well, I think he would be one to monitor for opposition clubs, but I'm not going to predict that he would leave. That being said, Ben Hobbs, Will Phillips, Neil Erasmus, and as I said earlier, Angus Sheldrick could be sorts of players to find new homes, potentially if they don't get the games they're looking for. I know to different extents, all of these guys are good, probably AFL standard, but couldn't crack regular games. I'm actually unsure off the top of my head about Will Phillips, but there were trade rumors early this year. So I don't know if he's in North Melbourne's plans for their best 23 in 2025. But if he's not, then I would expect him to potentially look for a new home. And finally, I want to list the pre-agents. What are pre-agents? They're players that are not free agents. They'll be a free agent one year from now. And sometimes you see these guys get traded so that clubs can cash in on their contracted status. So I'm just going to get up on the screen here. These are some quality players. You've got Zach Bailey, Sam Walsh, Switkowski, Myers, Ben King, Connor Ryden, Jack Buckley, Dylan Moore, Mitch Lewis, Bailey Fritch, Tom Sparrow, Bailey Scott, and Zach Butters. Zach Butters would probably be the biggest name there, certainly in terms of established talent. And it would just be intriguing. I guess I'll put it to you. Do you think there's any chance any of these guys move clubs? Mitch Lewis, there was a bit of a rumor about him uh, potentially being courted by the Brisbane Lions. That got denied. I would expect Mitch Lewis is more likely to stay loyal to Hawthorne there. So if I had to throw out a, a few names that could potentially leave, there has previously been a Switkowski back to Victoria rumor. Again, contracted here to Fremantle deal that trade. I doubt it. Same thing with Ben King. Like he will be uncontracted and a free agent, I think, in 2026. Gold Coast probably don't have the incentive to trade him a year early because they don't really need draft picks. Always got to ask the question of talented GWS players, Connor Iden and Jack Buckley. I'm sure clubs will come looking for those types, both very good underrated players too. Other than that, it would be a massive bombshell to see someone like Dylan Moore, Sam Walsh, or even Zach Bailey move clubs. And I did see in the comments section, someone say there's rumors about Zach Butters leaving. I haven't heard that, but let me know in the comments if you have, but I would be stunned if he left. In 2026 though, so 12 months after this, he does become a free agent, so it's probably more likely than Port Adelaide dealing him a year early. Anyway, guys, that is my predictions for trades. I've only left a handful in there, and to be honest, I've probably said some players I don't think will leave, and it'll actually turn out that they do leave. That is the nature of how these work, but let me know in the comments any other things you've heard or any predictions you'd like to offer in the comments section below. As always, I appreciate you watching, appreciate you being subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.